Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. I have an extra special guest for you today. Somebody's been on the channel before, but what we are going to do now is we're going to talk about some amazing bonus content coming to the course, How to Get Started One Rental at a Time. And as always, I don't talk about things I don't know. Uh, so we will be approaching a subject that I have zero experience and our guest has a lot. So Millennial Mike, how are you doing, sir? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me on. I love the books behind you. There's that One Rental at a Time, Millionaire Next Door. Uh, close every sale and what are the other two uh, uh the other one is a a uh copy of halo 2 oh, a it's video, a video game, game that came out in 2004 <laughs> and then super freakonomics which is actually an extremely funny written book about economics yeah yep uh that i've actually read that book that book came out a decade ago oh i think we lost your voice nope you're on mute i'm guessing Not oh, better. There you go. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> Not your know, headphones, huh? Yeah. Nope. Nope. Barring my brother's fancy headphones. Yeah. So Super Freakonomics, I think, came out something like a decade ago, but it's a pretty funny book. So. There you go. There you go. Well, hey. Um, first off, thank you for coming back. We scheduled this very last minute. I had a cancellation, and I wanted to get this out there. So thank you for being flexible. No problem. So let's just get into it. You've been on the channel before. You talked about house hacking a duplex. You've talked about uh, you know getting out of state investments. I think at the time you were getting your third one. Mm -hmm. uh, so what you've actually signed up to do for us is you're going to create some bonus content around out of state investing, which I think is I think it's a critical subject. And again, I ain't got any experience with that. So uh, so thank you, and uh, let's paint the vision of what's coming. You think? Yeah. So, I mean, for a lot of people, probably similar to me, you know, I bought my first rental property in Seattle, which at the time was the number one appreciating market 24 months in a row. And we're still yeah. always in the top five. So nice. I understand how it's extremely intimidating to look around at the landscape and say, you know, I just don't have $300,000 for a million dollar duplex down payment. Right. Um, and so then what, what do you do after you get your first property that hopefully you can house hack with maybe a 3% down? Right. How do you move forward investing? Uh, and that was where really I, I, I met some other people actually because you introduced me to them. I met my mentor, Mark. I met a bunch of other uh, investors that he's mentored. Um, and he talked to me about different markets. And eventually I found my way into investing in Gary, Indiana, which of course is not Seattle, Washington. And really what I'm going to try to talk about for your course, which still seems odd to me that I would ever be able to make something, I guess I'm not teaching you, but, yeah. but that I'm the experienced one when I've been following you for a long time, yeah. um, is just exactly like the do's and don'ts and how to get started in out-of-state investing so that you don't end up failing, losing your money or getting taken advantage of. And those are really the three big things you want, you want to avoid. Yeah. I think this is going to be particularly powerful because when you create the first kind of intro video to, you know, millennial Mike, who he is, I do want you to start with the fact that you invested in your backyard. You're living in one half of your house hack, right? Mm -hmm. And then just the fact you had to go elsewhere. And because that's going to be an interesting dichotomy, right? The ability to kind of manage your neighbor mm -hmm. is very different than being I don't know, five, six states. Is it like 2000 miles away for you? Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's a long ways away. It's, you know, it's, it's, <laughs> I don't know. It's, I mean, can you even get to, do you, I guess you have to fly to Chicago and drive down. Yep. And actually I have to this date for your viewers, I, I have owned property now in Indiana for a year and a half that I have never once seen. I've never been to it. I've never seen it. I've never met my real estate agent in person, my property manager in person. Everything has been done virtually via my phone. That's okay. it. My first trip to Indiana will be this October. My girlfriend and I are going to Chicago and then we're going to drive down. And I won't keep her in Indiana when Chicago <laughs> so close, but we're going to have a good time. There you go. Well, you get to write off that trip as a tax deduction, as you know. I'm excited for that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that That's not a bad thing. Yep. Right. Yep. So again, these are the things um, I, 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 I'll tell you, I've always known I needed to create a bonus section for out-of-state investing. Um, I've had others approach me on it and I just don't get a good vibe, right? I'm like, you're just a slimy <laughs> salesperson, right? I'm like, nope, not going there. Yep. Yep. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, I think there's a lot of people that look at out-of-state investing and the first words they tell me is it's cheap. And my first answer back is you can go broke buying cheap. That's right. <laughs> right? So it's, it's yeah, I, I mean, cheap is good. Lower down payments, good. You better yield, good. But man, if you don't do the due diligence up front on the team, mm -hmm. 
you're going to you either get lucky or go broke. Right. It's 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 kind of that black and white for me. Yeah. Well, you know, one of the things so I early on found a really good real estate uh, agent who's bought houses for me and the other 10 people in my group. She's done a lot of houses for us. And <clears throat> one of the first things that she does to steer all of us clear problems is she knows when local sellers are selling lemons or garbage because they know that a big wig out of state California investor is going to swoop in with their bags of money. Yeah. And she's like, no, you want to avoid this property. Same thing with my property manager. And if you don't have somebody to do that, you're going to overpay for that area. Now it's going to be vastly underpaying compared to what you're used to in California or Washington. You're getting a house at 10% of yeah. what you're used to looking at. But if you still overpay and then it doesn't rent for what you wanted, even though you got a cheap property, it doesn't cash flow. And as you always talk about, yield and cash flow is the number mm -hmm. one thing to keeping you out of trouble. Yeah. What I really want people to hear is you need a contact that's going to tell you don't buy that. Right. I've, I've heard too many horror stories about, you know, again, I, I know this because I talk to agents in other states and they see a 408, a 425, a, a 650, these area codes mm -hmm. from the West Coast calling, mm -hmm. you know, and the price goes up. Yep. You know, 10, you know, it goes up for us 10 grand. We're like, that's, you know, <laughs> it's a rounding error for some of right. our stuff. But for them, it's, you know, a 10% rise. That's like 20%. Right. Right. So, yeah. I, I, um, I just want people to be very cautious. I think out-of-state investing is great. I think it's a great way for people to get started, but you have to, and this is what I hope that you're bringing to the courses. You got to do that due diligence upfront before you spend one, before you write one offer, you mm -hmm. have better spent as much time evaluating the team, their references, the checks and balances, cross-checking referrals and references. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, you always talk about doing the work and doing the work is what keeps you out of trouble. It gives you the confidence to move forward because you know if you've, in your case, you usually talk about studying a market, which is still important. If you've done the work on your team and you've interviewed six real estate agents, now right. you know, you can say, okay, I like this one better and why? Same thing with your property managers. I like this one better and why? <laughs> and then after you've done all of the work on the people, you still have to do all of your work on the market. You don't get to just shortchange it because now you have experts in your corner. People are capable of making mistakes. And ultimately, <laughs> no one cares more about your money than you do. Absolutely. So, <laughs> do your work on the market and do your work on the people. And then you can move forward. I think I probably spent nearly a year doing the work and watching my mentor, Mark, our common friend, Mark. Mm -hmm. uh, I think he went from zero to 10 in Gary before I ever even wrote an offer That's awesome. because I just kept watching his deals, studying his deals, and then calling people he recommended. I take credit for finding the real estate agent, but everybody else I used was for Mark. That's awesome. Again, that's, that's, that's what I want people to hear, right? You spend a year kind of building it out, watching, checking your balances. You don't just rush in. I have had friends. This is not an exaggeration. They see some top list from Money Money Magazine or CNBC or Forbes or Fortune or whatever it is, mm -hmm. right? It's like the top 10 growing markets in the Midwest or the highest yielding markets or most cash flow, whatever the list is called. Mm -hmm. They call two agents, they pick <laughs> one, and they've written an offer by the end of the weekend. I'm like, well, how do you do? Some <laughs> people have money to burn, but I think the idea for your course is to help people like me yes. who are starting out without a lot, exactly. not only a lot of experience, but probably not a lot of money. You know, if you're a big wig and you, and you're already an accredited investor with a million dollar net worth, making yeah. 250 grand a year, maybe it doesn't hurt you as much, but for me, every dollar counts. No, th th that's exactly what I want. And let's be clear, losing money for anyone is dumb, but losing money because you didn't do the work is unacceptable. In my opinion, yeah. I yeah. scream, I talk about it. I must hit it almost every day. Do the work, <laughs> do yeah. the freaking work. It's, it's, the path to a better financial future is not hard. You just follow it. And it starts mm -hmm. with doing the work. Uh, you know, my talk about daily disciplines in 20 mm -hmm. minutes a day. You're going to bring in this something that in my course is kind of later, right? Building out the network. If right. you're going out of state, if you if you can't drive to your market, you better do the, you, it better be about the people first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, because, if you want peace of mind, how are you going to sleep at night if you're stressed? You have to know my property manager has it controlled. My real estate agent's making sure I'm not getting hosed. The contractors that I've worked with and interviewed are not going to take advantage of me yeah. because when that pipe bursts in the middle of the night, which I had, 
in Indiana, it gets real cold in the wintertime when it bursts in the middle of the night and you're sitting there like, oh no, what's it going to cost us? to empty out the basement of all that water and then dehumidify it. Oh, crud. And people will take advantage of you if you have not found the right people. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, um, you've, it, that's what I, I'm just, again, I've been looking for someone to talk out of state investing. That's going to talk about the people. And the biggest thing for me, right. I was in sales for a long time and for the last decade or so ran teams. And this is what I expect from my out of state or would expect from an out of state team is, Bad news doesn't get better with age, right? right? There are people that are like out of state. They're like, I'm going to spin this in the most positive way. So technically it's not lying, mm -hmm. but damn it. I would call it a lie or a fib yeah. or whatever yeah. you want. Right. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like, like the burst pipe. Well, you know, Mike, you, you got a leak in the basement. Well, we, <laughs> we, we, we might want to, we might want to go look at that when there's like a gushing water and it's like three yeah. feet deep. Right. Yep. So that, that's something I expect from my team is to tell me bad information as soon as they hear it. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. And uh, sorry, one thing popped to my mind on something you said earlier, Please, uh, talking about not always just chasing the money because it's cheaper. <clears throat> I remember when I was looking at purchasing a property, it might've been my second or third rental. And I was talking with you about it, about the difference of like rehabbing a property versus finding something that's fully rehabbed already. Yeah. Your dollars may actually go further to buy something that's fully rehabbed. So a lot of people like to get into these cheap properties, remodel them, you know, do that whole pull the cash out. Nothing wrong with that. But there is also a benefit in just finding something that's fully remodeled. Yeah. And in my personal opinion, if you're out of state, I don't think you want to try to manage a remodel from 2,000 miles away. It's a little bit better to get something that you're like, okay, it looks great. It's been handled. The inspection came back and it looked good. Mm -hmm. If something does break, it probably won't be major. And if right. it was, it was just unforeseen. And that's just the cost of doing business. Yeah, I'm glad that's in it. Uh, I really do believe that. Really, when you're looking out of state cheap, and I, I'm just going to be making up numbers, right? You can buy a fully turnkey property for 80 grand, but you can buy it cheap at 60. I'm just making these up. Mm -hmm. And with 60, yeah, it's cheaper, but you're going to have to put the down payment. Maybe it's a little less, but then you got 18 grand worth of repair costs. Mm -hmm. And what I want people to realize, I, you want to remove points of risk when you're doing out of state investing. Mm -hmm. Trying to do a Burr project from 2,000 miles away may feel good the first time, but trust me, you are eventually going to get hosed. Yeah. Just remove those points of contention. Do what you can to de-risk. And I'm glad that's going to be a part of it, right? Going after a turnkey or a cleaner smelling yeah. property is, you know, because again, this just drives me crazy. What people sometimes realize, don't realize is there are lots of, we're both Mike, right? Mike and Mike. Mm -hmm. There are lots of Mikes in Gary, Indiana that live there. Mm -hmm. And in order for us to get it in Washington or California, it means the local Mikes passed on it. Yep. And they're probably <laughs> passing on lemons, hoping an idiot from the West Coast mm -hmm. buys it. Like, oh, yep. those guys don't know they got a complete rewire and the house is off the foundation and there's no sump pump and I mean, whatever else there is, right? So I, I actually, strongly suggest that. Th that's a good reason for uh, if you're, and you may feel frustration when you start making offers because you lose out. If you're losing out, that's good. Yes. Because if other people want it, then that means that you're doing a good job in finding a value pro valuable property. That probably goes for anywhere, honestly. Oh, if yeah. other people want it, then you know you're trying to get something good. If you're the only offer and it's been on the market for 30 days and you get accepted after a day, you might want to say, hmm. <laughs> I, that, I'm so glad you brought it. I remember a conversation I had with an investor. It was a California investor buying an out of state. I think it was in Ohio. And he's like, Michael, I found a great deal. I'm like, all right, tell me about it. Well, it's been on the market 105 days. <laughs> it's not, it's never had a price drop. And I just wrote an offer above asking. I'm like, what? You don't Yikes. think there's, you don't, you don't think that deal has been kicked by like every local investor a dozen times. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, we, 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 we sometimes think our bags of money make us smarter than we are. That's not the case. It's definitely not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You got to put in the work. Uh, again, you got to watch the team. Uh, how long have you had an out-of-state property? Has it been a couple of years now? This no, first it's one? been uh, over months? a year and a half. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So what have been some of the stories, the goods and bad? Have you had to do a release or you had an eviction mm -hmm. or anything? No evictions. So I've been oh. fortunate. No awesome. evictions. Um, and I bought my first property literally right as the pandemic started. <laughs> um, I know, right? And then I went on to out. buy- it did. I bought three total <clears throat> between March and November of last year. So during the height of nice. the pandemic, 
no evictions. There was a couple months where people lost their job or their job was shut down. They fell behind on rent. They caught back up. Oh, nice. Having a good property manager that is having conversations with the tenants and coming up with a plan to make payments and you know that type of stuff. I never worried about it because she always had a plan and then I knew what the plan was. And she was so, communicating with you during it and she wasn't hiding and you know avoiding your phone calls. And Yeah. So one of the things that's a little frustrating is if you have a property manager that doesn't have great communication. So my property manager doubles as someone who manages my properties and someone who potentially brings me deals as her other uh, investors for property she manages buy and sell. Okay. On the property management side, communication is fantastic. I get responses back immediately. On the real estate side, it's a little bit slower, but I don't care that much because where it matters, her yes. primary job, we're yeah. good to go. Over here, if she takes forever to for respond to me about something, you know what? That's fine. I wouldn't yeah. have had even a look at that deal anyways. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, go ahead. I don't know. I, I think that's awesome because you're paying for one of the service and the other one's an extra. It's a nice dab, right? So it's a bonus. Yeah, it's a bonus. That's awesome. So I, I'm going to put you on the spot. When uh, when can my uh, our our friends, right? You're part of the Facebook group. You're a very That's early right. member. When can they expect to start seeing some content about out of state investing in the course? Because it'll be bonus and free. Yeah, I, I I mean, Mike asked if I thought I was able to get it done by October first. Shouldn't be a problem. Um, I'm going to try to make it pretty. Uh, inclusive of all the different things that I can think of. I was actually going to make a post in your group, yes. in the in the One Rental at a Time Facebook group, which I recommend. If you haven't bought the course, buy the course. It'll be the best money you ever spent. If Even if you never looked at the course, having access to the group yeah. and just being able to type a question yeah. and know that Mike is going to respond to every question as well as 50 other investors are going to respond to every it's question. Crazy. They know your yeah. market. You're so big now. Like, there's people in every market. So even, yeah. even if you never look at the course, the group is worth <laughs> the money. Um, I agree. I was going to make a post in the group saying, I'm going to create a course for yeah, your please. course and say, Hey, is there any specific questions that someone might have that that's awesome answer in case I miss anything? That's great. Yeah. I would love you to do that. And I appreciate you reaching out. Uh, this has been a section, like I said, it's been a whole, uh, cause I, I don't talk about things. I don't know. I could certainly read, do all these other things, but I'm like, and now we have the guy that's going to start creating. So, Mike, I want to appreciate you. You have an amazing YouTube channel. Let's give that a little plug. Where can people find you and follow you? Sure. So, uh, Millennial Mike on YouTube or on Instagram. You can find me, follow me there. Uh, or, you know, you can just find me in a random video here or there on Mike's channel here. So, that's yeah. just as good. <laughs> yeah. And again, Millennial Mike was uh, did the first book review for me. So, uh, uh, that was like the feature video on my channel for a year. So, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Yeah. And I'm looking forward to your second book. And once again, make sure you do a pre-order. I want to do a review. Yes, I'm still mad about the title. I thought that that it should have been The Real Estate Empire Strikes Back, but <laughs> win some, you lose some. <laughs> you are so creative. You are so creative. Well, Mike, thank you very much for doing this. It was great that we just slapped this together. And again, thank you for committing to, to creating some, some content that is sorely needed. I really do appreciate it. No problem. Thanks, Mike. Got it. Take care.